Here's a little pet peeve of mine that still goes on pretty regularly in the EV industry. There's been talk for well over a decade about how EV batteries are about to be revolutionized at the chemistry level and something's just about to take off. Something's about to change the way we build EVs and a bunch of people hold off because they want to wait until these next generation cells come out on the market. Sometimes it's solid state, sometimes it's sodium ion, sometimes it's aluminum ion. It's weird. Yeah, look into it. But I'm not against the idea of new chemistries being pursued, by the way. I don't think that we should shy away from researching if there are better chemistries out there. Absolutely pursue that. But what drives me nuts is a lot of the time how they're marketed. There's a lot of red flags to me whenever I read certain headlines that talk about upcoming battery technologies that very much completely gloss over how EV efficiency and charging and range actually works because the truth is there are a ton of variables that go into your EV range and their charge speed but so many news headlines I guess want to get an easy click they want to jump out at their readers with something that sounds amazing so oftentimes you'll read headlines that say something like this new battery technology that's about to come out will let EVs drive 1600 miles on a single charge and that's a major red flag to me because all it really may be talking about is just higher energy density of cells but for one it's not referring to what kind of ev that battery would be inside maybe you could by some miracle squeeze all of those new battery technologies into a model 3 which gets five miles per kilowatt hour and then they're assuming that they could fit 250 kilowatt hours into a small sedan and extrapolating that out to get the range figure but of course that would be entirely different from getting a big pickup truck to go that far or getting a boxy SUV to go that far. So this notion that a lot of media companies put in their headlines is that cell chemistry directly impacts range when the truth is that's very, very dependent on the type of car we're referring to, which is why I find it misleading to just say, oh yeah, this chemistry unlocks this range. It's like, well, in what circumstances, in what conditions, and in what shape of vehicle, again, a lot of variables go into EV range. And then the next one that I often hear very regularly is that this new battery chemistry can be charged from 5 to 90% within two minutes or some crazy charging tech. And that one, in my opinion, is even worse because there is so many things that go into how fast of a charging curve you get on your vehicle that are not actually even up to the battery pack. So even if yesterday Tesla or Rivian found some way of switching the battery chemistry around in their cars and suddenly they can recharge them from from five to 90% within four minutes or whatever, there's actually not infrastructure to support that. Like even if the battery pack could take it and there was no issues with degradation or cycle life, let's just say as a lifetime warranty, just the battery pack lasts forever. Even if that's the case, the vast majority of DC fast chargers in the country are all very much limited by how high an amperage they can output and how well they can cool the charge handles, the charge ports. There's so many variables that are outside side of the vehicle chemistry itself that the idea of, well, I'm going to wait for the car to get a certain type of battery pack so that I can charge that quickly. When in reality, there's basically no charging infrastructure right now in the country that would enable those kinds of charge times to be possible. The other frustrating thing to me also about the whole like 1600 miles of range is that no one, and I kid you not, no one is actually driving that long between charges. And even if the energy density allows that kind of range, which I'm pretty sure at any kind of meaningful volume, it's not really possible. Most likely when these articles are talking about batteries that have three to four times the energy density of the cells in our cars, they're very likely 10 to 20 times the price of those cells in our cars, meaning that sure, we could probably make an EV today that goes 2,000 miles on a single charge, but it also happens to cost $5 million. So does that really move the needle? Does that really make people want to buy more electric cars? No, of course not. So if you can't couple the energy density improvements along with substantially lower cost, it kind of defeats the point. And on top of that, EVs haven't like stopped at 300, 400 miles of range because they can't figure out how to cram more batteries in them. Like we make some pretty big EVs already. It would not be hard to stuff in more cells, even into existing sedans and SUVs. There's some additional cargo room. They could probably designate more cells or even just buy 
buy higher energy density cells that are more expensive. But the reason we don't do that is the economics in the manufacturing doesn't make all that sense, especially once you start figuring out most people, at least in America, are driving around 30, 40 miles per day. And if you can charge from home, then that means if you could have a 1,000 or 1,600 mile range EV, you'd be hogging around all these extra batteries that for the vast majority of driving are just increasing the weight of the car, they're decreasing the efficiency, and they're driving up the price of the vehicle to make it substantially more expensive than it needs to be. So my whole point about like, okay, maybe there's some new battery chemistries, battery technologies on the horizon that will make EVs lighter or make them more efficient and allow us to use more space efficient packs. I'm all for it, but to act like that's going to translate into 1600 mile range. No, that's just silly. And that's ridiculous. I mean, most gas cars are not doing that. And it's much, much easier to put a bigger fuel tank in a gas car. Honestly, it would not be that hard for gas car companies to make sedans and SUVs and even pickup trucks that could go over a thousand miles on a single tank, but they don't because they know for the vast majority of circumstances, it doesn't really matter. Driving around town, most people are not even going a hundred miles in a day. And even on a road trip, the human body needs to stop a lot more frequently than the car does. And you're most likely going to find a bathroom and grab some snacks and a drink. And within all of that time span, your car can be recharged or refueled from a pump. So the idea of making a car just keep lasting like that is a bit ridiculous. So to find the most practical application of no, let's not have batteries or fuel tanks that go that long on a charge because we would rather the tank or battery be smaller and more efficient or have more storage space in the vehicle and keep the vehicle weight down so that you're not consuming as much energy per mile and you're getting better fuel economy or you're getting better watt hours per mile. And of course, coupling back on the charging thing, infrastructure is impacting charge time, at least in my experience, way, way, way more than the battery pack chemistry is. Teslas might have somewhat of a lousy charging curve that people complain about, but I guarantee you the reason people would much rather road trip with a lousy charging curve in a Tesla is because they have access to all these V2 and V3 superchargers, which may not provide 350 kilowatts of speed, but they are everywhere. And you've got so many to choose from. And most of those stations have 12, 15, some of them 30 charging stalls to choose from, which can't be said the same about Electrify America. You get down stations far more regularly. You get slower charging EVs clogging them up and usually not as many stalls. A lot of them are averaging four stalls or six stalls, substantially fewer than what Tesla typically has at their stations. And the user interface is a lot more complicated. You've got screens and buttons to work around with. You've got more expensive electricity prices. They put them in inconvenient locations. So I would just argue that as far as EV charging goes, infrastructure is everything. That's part of the reason Chinese EVs are able to charge so quick is because they have a much higher voltage architecture at the grid level over there, which means they don't have to run as many amps as they typically do in the US. And that lets the battery get a lot of power back into it quickly without having to get super hot, which is why you hear about these crazy charging EVs over there that get 400 or 500 kilowatts. Yes, the battery chemistries help for sure. And China does subsidize a lot of the minerals that go into the batteries that allow them to last longer. They still have great cycle life. Huge misconception people have is that anytime an EV charges faster than a Tesla, it must be because they're degrading the battery pack overnight and killing it. Even though yeah, my Model Y battery pack went bad at 74,000 miles and some of those Zeker EVs that charge at 500 kilowatts, some of them have lifetime warranties on the battery pack. So they literally never charge for a replacement. So I don't think they would do that if the battery pack was going to need to be serviced every 50 or 100,000 miles even. They last long and it's because of the infrastructure that allows for that. It's not just a matter of, ooh, what's the cell chemistry on the inside? Is it solid state? Is it aluminum? I don't know. So just some red flags to be aware of when you're reading EV news and you see crazy headlines talking about that. They're kind of silly. They're kind of conflating things together that don't make sense. And I wish news agencies would stop reporting on advancements in energy density as if it's going to allow EVs to have range that high or charge time that ridiculous, when in reality, it, it's not all about the chemistry. That gets way too much attention, and I think there's a lot more that EVs could be doing with the exact same cells we've been using for years. That's honestly part of the thing that excites me the most about some of the newer startups, like Aptera, of course, is looking for extremely high range with honestly really, really small battery packs, like getting 600 miles of range out of a battery pack smaller than the car I'm sitting in right now, or same story with 
Martello. Yes, I am biased. I work for them, but they're also using the same 2170s. They're off the shelf. They're readily available and they're able to fit it in a much, much smaller footprint so that you can have high range in a really, really compact vehicle that's still very utility focused. And same story with Slate. You know, I'm pretty sure they're using pouch cells, not 2170s because pouch cells are cheaper. But again, that makes sense for their demographic. Slate wants to be as cheap as possible. Pouch cells already exist. It's not some kind of miracle technology and it should allow them to have a really, really affordable electric vehicle on the road, which is great. So personally, I don't think we need a revolution in battery technology for EVs to do a lot more than they're doing today. But these news agencies with those headlines feel like they just don't know what they're talking about. How do you guys feel about those verbiages? Feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.